Here is Elizabeth Nelson. Hi, guys. Uh, I hope everybody's all right, uh, doing, doing well today. Please say hello in the comments. Um, I'm going to try to keep it short. I'd love to have a discussion afterwards and um, get some context going. I really wanted to talk about uh, smart buildings, the how we look at smart buildings. And I think in order to get started telling that story, I need to tell my own story, which is that I'm a, I'm a scientist. I'm a researcher. I... Uh, had a very interesting introduction into buildings and real estate and all that. Um, I worked as a real, uh, researcher at an advertising agency, one of the top advertising agencies in the US, in the world actually, and I loved it. I was a young professional. I got to work with Nike and Starbucks and EA Sports and p and and all of these amazing brands. I got to do fantastic research that was well-funded. I got to look at customer journeys and design products and really dive deep and I had moved to the the west coast to do that job I had put everything I could into that job and and what we're doing and I started doing what all of us do right when we don't have a social life a boyfriend uh, any sort of kind of experience there I started working nights and weekends I started uh, having trouble sleeping even though I was exhausted I really um, had trouble monitoring my emotions and needed more coffee in the morning, more wine at night to get wind down or wind up, depending on what I was wanting to do. And then I fell asleep during a bikini wax, which she assured me had never happened before. And it was something that was my wake up call and it should have happened a lot sooner. but. It was something that I needed to experience in order to realize that what I was doing wasn't working anymore. And so I had to figure out what I wanted to do. And I decided that I wanted to stay a researcher, but I wanted to figure out a better way that we could work, that I could work, and eventually how other people could work. And I started diving into this and looking at everything that we do in the working environment, everything that we do as professionals and, and as humans, and looking at everything that we do wrong in this space. And there's so, so much. Um, so I pitched a PhD project to a university in the Netherlands um, that combined the business department, the psychology department, and the biomedical engineering department using technologies and, and smart building technologies to measure and uh, did an amazing, amazing research study, long-term research study with CBRE which we called the Healthy Offices Research. Um, it's also uh, a part of my book. Part of me, uh, we should actually do a giveaway, maybe. Should we do a, should we do a quiz for, for a book? My book is uh, half of my own experience because I burned out in a fabulous way, uh, in, the, in the most fabulous way, and uh, working in advertising, and then kind of the, the Freakonomics, the science behind what we studied and what we found. So let's do a little um, intermission right now and do a quiz. If somebody can tell me uh, what year the first smart building was built, maybe even the season, uh, I will give you, I will send you one of my books for free. Does anybody have uh, any idea when the first smart building was? I'm gonna keep talking, but I'll leave it there. So um, so I had this amazing experience where I started working um, on research projects and challenging the way that we worked and challenging not only how we all work, but how we individually work. Are there personas at work? We did this amazing research study with Booking.com where we looked at the difference between introverts and extroverts, morning people and evening people, and they need vastly different things. And interestingly, they're uh, nice. Somebody got it. I was so hoping that uh, I would trick it, but yeah, 1620 is the year of the first smart building. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but uh, 1620 was the first smart building. 400 years ago, we certified our first building on the 400th anniversary of the first smart building. It was actually a smart chicken coop, but it regulated airflow and um, temperature to mass produce eggs and uh, make a lot more eggs. It was by a Dutch inventor, Cornelius Drebbel. So well done. Um, Milan, if you can send me your email, I will uh, make sure that I get you a book. <laughs> I think I already have it. But um, 
so so we started looking at uh, personas. How do how do people um, what do pop people need? And we also found that these personas have clusters. These types of people have specific jobs that they get into, and there's more likely to be working in this role if they're this type of person. Introverts are usually uh, into deeper focus tasks, uh, writers, uh, technical people, this kind of thing. It's not a rule, but you often see extroverts um, doing things that are more collaborative, uh, account work, uh, where they have more meetings in the day. They're very good at that, and they're also not disturbed by, let's say, um, sound disturbances or a very dynamic workforce. Uh, they're just, they have a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more oomph for, for dealing with that sort of situation. And so looking at how we look at buildings for different types of people. So when we came up with this, uh, when we kind of approached and we, we started talking about, should we do a smart building certification? We asked some very serious questions. We asked, can we do this affordably? This isn't gonna be a really expensive certification that, that only the best can afford and only can do that. Can we do something that's, that's helpful? Um, and can we do something that's not just a checklist of technologies where uh, the one who spends the most or, or has the most tech wins, but really looking at, like the video said, what is the outcome? Because if we're being really honest with ourselves, we have to say that if we certify the smartest building in the world, it should also be the best building in the world because if the best build, if it's not, we have completely screwed this up. The reason that we have smart buildings and the reason that we do this is because it's a tool. It's something that we are using to improve the, the health, the safety, the building usage, all of this sort of thing. So it's something that we really need to challenge ourselves to say, this isn't the end point. The technology is just the beginning. It's how we use it. It's how we um, apply it and, and how we better innovate the spaces that we spend 90% of our time in. So this is um, this is kind of our, our background. It's something that I really want to challenge everyone. And I, I don't think this audience needs to be challenged, to be honest. But I would love to have a conversation about uh, what 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 are the questions that we need to ask? Because sometimes it is about asking the right question. You know, um, one of the things that I loved was this example of uh, the smartphone these days. So I have in my phone as much technology as NASA had when they put a man on the moon for the first time. But the way that those astronauts woke up that day and the way that I woke up this morning are exactly the same. We set an alarm uh, doing the calculations for when we wanted to uh, get to, in my case, uh, <laughs> the daycare on time, and in his case, to the space shuttle. But um, how, when we need to ask better questions, when do we need to say, it's not about when do I wake up, it's about getting to my appointment on time. And we have enough technology that we can actually start solving more complex problems, asking better questions, getting more involved. And we're not at a point in buildings right now where we can really uh, have these automated buildings that completely work. This is the time that we are all getting our hands in, getting dirty, getting involved with the data, getting involved with the problems in the building, getting involved with the way that we work and the different types of people that work in our spaces. So it's, it's, a, it's a heavy time and it's not the easiest time to, to make a smart building certification. It would be much easier to say, let's wait until everything's automated and, and buildings are running on their own and then we can use that data and we can measure that. It's much more complicated to say, we're gonna deal with buildings that are at all stages, that are dumb buildings that are on their way to this and getting into how do we build for the better future? Because one of our biggest goals in this is making better buildings faster and getting involved with that. So I'm I'm a bit brief right now. I'm a little bit ahead of schedule. Does anybody have any questions or do we wanna talk about any subjects in particular? Maybe Voucher wants to come up to the stage or people <laughs> write things down. Well, yeah, that's been really amazing. I have a question for you. Yesterday we had a meeting at BeatWid. Uh, they're also one of our partners at uh, at Smart Building Certification. And um, uh, one of the people that was there was uh, Eric Ubbels. And Eric said, well, people are not as smart as their buildings. 
well, if the buildings are really dumb, what do we need to change to get all those real estate people into adapting these kind of change that we're working on? I, I think there's a really good um, I think there's a really good point here because humans uh, we have a certain level of intelligence that that the technologies don't have. And the technologies have vastly more data than we could ever collect trying to do this on our own and the ability to analyze it. So if we stay in our own lanes, and we do what, what we are meant to do, asking better questions, setting better standards for the technology, getting involved. Because we also talked with um, some technology companies who were measuring air quality back in the day, right? And they yeah. set it to 2000 because they said, well, it should be below 2000. So we'll just say that's the maximum. And then they realized so many of our spaces have really, really high CO2 levels. We were measuring, a colleague of ours was measuring one in a school that had 7,000 PPMs. Wow. Uh, that's, that's the kind of level that can either make you sick or possibly make you pass out. It's a really terrible um, level there. So looking at you know, having the technology measure what, what it can and having that data and, and respecting that and us having um, being humans, you know, we've been treating humans like machines in, in workplaces and we need to utilize machines and we need to treat humans like humans. And right now we're not doing either, uh, not to its full extent. So I think that's what we need to get back to. Yeah, let me go to the stage also and see if we have questions here. Well, yeah, Richard is asking also a question. Uh, is there, if there is a smart building certification, is there also a smart building standard version 1.0 perhaps? Yeah. That's an interesting well, question. There is a smart building certification. Yeah. Uh, that's the first part of the question. And then um, I think I think that's an interesting question. I, I think the standard um, is something that comes from the market and comes from, from certifications. One of the things that we really try to do is de-silo this very siloed industry. Um, when we were building our certification, we wanted as many uh, diverse eyes on it as possible so that it represented tech companies, it represented builders, it represented architects, uh, academics and researchers. Um, yeah, it, who am I missing? It, it represents everybody, everybody. <laughs> in, the in, the, in the ecosystem so that it, um, it shows what they're doing, but it also uh, it really gives a good viewpoint of a building. So one of the things is, we're getting asked by buildings to certify buildings that they're thinking about buying. That's one thing about having an affordable certification. You can say, what's going on with the building? Yeah. This is something we do for our homes where we um, get a viewpoint on this before we buy a home. And it's something that makes sense to do for a building if we're going to spend all that money. Yeah, and I think on the, on, on going back to the, the standardization, I think it's not possible to make a standardization right now because it's way too early days in smart buildings uh, in, the, in all the technology that's coming to the market right now. So if we make a standard right now, well, it's old fashioned in a week time yeah. uh, and, and way more old fashioned in a year time. So then you can break down the, that standard and start all over again. So I think we need to measure way more, bring in live data into uh, maybe also into our certification to really get that data out of those buildings and to learn from that data what we can do better yeah. on energy saving, on health, on uh, security, on all kinds of, uh, of issues. Um, so I guess the, the standard is, is coming, but not now. If you're working on the standard now, that doesn't make any sense. And it needs to be a moving target. You know, when you certify, you'll see where you where you rank as opposed to um, other buildings. You'll see how you rate as opposed to the smartest buildings. Um, we're also yeah, looking at more specific uh, inclinations, but really looking at something that is going to change. Smart is gonna change so much in the next five years. Yeah. Cre creating something that's static is just asking for it to be a dinosaur quite quickly. So we need to have something that evolves, that's um, constantly changing, and that is real time. That's the nature of smart. Yeah, I think so too. Well, we have way more questions. What are the most important smart building metrics from Ron Thompson? Yeah, I think that's great. I think there is a, a core within smart. I think there's things that have to do, um, that, that just need to be in every building. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't certify if you don't have them, but this is things like air quality. We, we need to look at how air is being treated in the building and, and just being aware of that because I don't think it's acceptable anymore to say you have a smart building and not know what's going on with your air. Occupancy is also, um, 
uh, a core part of smart building certification, looking at how is your building being used, especially now that we're looking at changing times in towards terms of square feet utilization, building companies looking at different square foot utilization or changing their business models in some way. And then um, uh, energy uses and sustainability. We, we really think that um, smart, there's no excuse once you start measuring not to optimize and work towards a more sustainable uh, building or maybe even an energy positive building. That's um, something that some of our buildings are doing, which is so fantastic. Yeah. Well, do we have more questions? Uh, Teresa from them. Uh, I um, such an amazing experience. I'd like to know more. Uh, uh, I like to know the metrics used on it. Well, we can share a lot of insights, I guess. Or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do during our events. So uh, yeah. So um, we talked about some of them, you know, building usage, environment, uh, safety and security, um, more of the sustainability, looking at this sort of area. Um, then we, we also look into uh, what is the platform that you're actually working at? Do you have access to the data? Because can you, can you say that you have a smart building if you're measuring everything, but you have no idea what's going on? Um, and then uh, the future-proof nature of it. Do you have a modular design where something can be updated remotely or uh, a clicking in and out system? So really looking at uh, that. But if you want to get in touch, we can also get into more details of the metrics. Yeah, and also about our standardization. Well, Richard is commenting on that. But I think we are now on version, working on version number three already. Mm -hmm. And that's just in a couple of weeks' time. So it's changing really, really, really fast. On each building, we're learning. And it, in each building, we get more insights on how we need to do this. It's not uh, a, a standardization uh, yet. Uh, and we but have if a you very know more, inclusive ecosystem. Yeah. That's incredibly important to us. We want to be challenged on this. We want to make sure that this is applicable. We want to apply it to enough buildings where we have that level of validity to really say, this is a strong outcome and this is representative of what's going on. We have no interest in setting some ideal marketing, ideal uh standards on a whiteboard in a conference room. This is really based on not just the science and the background, but actually real world cases and the experience with our partners and constructive uh, criticism and, and challenging of this. Yeah, and then uh, Ron Thompson has also a great question. Who are the mo more uh, progressive firms, suppliers, uh, commercial real estate landlords, property managers in the smart building space? Oh, that's like the worst question to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we want to have names. <laughs> you want to well. name names. There, there are some really amazing players out there right now. And ironically, I think they're the ones who don't want us to name them. <laughs> um, but I, I think that I think what we're going to see, if I can kind of um, not answer the the question, but answer it, I think what we're going to see in the next year is this huge divide, where we're going to see the early players who are talking and working with us uh, very heavily, just have a huge jump in the market where yes. they're going to be on it. They're going to know their game plan. They're going to have their services connected to it. And then we're going to see the other ones who are sitting back to wait to be to to be proven of the financial model or that this is where it's going or that it doesn't um, monopolize some of their other business services that they do. Yeah. So I think I don't yeah, have we, to answer this one because we're going to see such a huge divide in the next year. Yeah, for surely in, in property management, we see a couple of property management uh, companies that do it with technology and they can do it five times cheaper than the old fashioned property management managers. So that is going to be a huge difference fast, I think. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we don't need to mention uh, uh, probably the old companies, but the, the new companies are coming and the old companies really need to come up uh, and step up their game, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Christian Overveen, what are the main areas the certification looks at? At which uh, city region in the world outperforms others right now? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think different parts of the world have different models that they're going towards. Um, if you look at Europe, for example, and specifically more in Northern Europe, you really have a social push for um, smart buildings. So you're seeing a lot of governments get involved, a lot of funding available, a lot of um, public spaces getting smarter and going to the grid. So that's sort of um, pushing in this area. The Americas is really looking at um, 
uh, return on investment, what's, uh, how much more is a smart building worth, how much more can it be rented out for, bought for, uh, this kind of thing. It is one of the reasons that we're working so heavily with the banks to work on higher valuations, um, the possible first smart mortgage, which um, we had a great event, what was it, a few months back with ING, where we talked about yeah. uh, our process with them and working towards a smart mortgage and they said before the pandemic, this was what, on the three to five year plan, more close to the five year plan. This is now on the two to three year plan. So it's something valuations has to come first, of course. But this is something that they are very much looking into. And they recognize that a smart building is worth a different amount than a building that's not. Yeah. And yesterday I had also another trigger. And that will also going to be one of the game changers, I think, for the smart building industry is the European Union with Frans Timmermans. They have the, the Green Deal. And in this Green Deal, there is, uh, I guess it's 350 trillion euros. That's a lot of money that's going to be invested in all kind of uh, projects that will reduce the amount of CO2. Well, of course, we have a big problem in real estate. And I know uh, yesterday somebody told, well, Allianz is uh, putting uh, some big efforts to get a lot of money out of that, uh, that, uh, that pocket uh, to really uh, upgrade their portfolio. So there is a big change coming ahead, I guess. Yeah. Um, Will is asking also a question. Is there uh, there certification for portable prefab buildings? So we we oh. haven't certified uh, um, a portable building um, or, or a prefab building. We do have uh, a corn shell certification that we do. Um, so it doesn't need to be in use necessarily. But the certification is designed to be applicable to um, any any worker residents right now. So we're still working on kind of the the major outskirts like uh, a sports arena, that sort of thing. But um, it should should be workable for that. So I would love to uh, do a case study and, and do a little test with that. Yeah, Milan. Well, Milan is uh, a winner. Also close to us. He's following us as a, uh, in our assessor training, I guess, or not Nicholas. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Milan is asking, uh, yesterday I listened to a very interesting talk with Laurie. Uh, Rawlinson. Yes, who is promoting a lot of technologies in workplaces globally. And she highlighted one very interesting fact that the best sensors providing valid data are people. Yeah. Are these human sensors somehow addressed by the smart building certification? Yeah. So yeah. we do. Great question. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have um, we use uh, phones um, for for different metrics. We also use feedback solutions. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. And I think that's going to be more and more true in the future. Cool. Well, Richard is uh, uh, heading some more comments. Uh, that's great. So let's have a chat really fast. Richard uh, De Ruiter, that will be amazing to get you also on uh, on board and get you uh, give you some more insights on what, what we're doing. and. Uh, and see if we can uh, get those buildings that you're working on also into our certification and maybe also into the awards. That's actually perfect timing because we are certifying our last buildings in the next couple of months before we're doing our awards, which I'm super excited about. Yes. And these are the first smart building awards. Uh, we're going to look at the smartest building in the war world. We're also going to look at um, named after the inventor of the first smart building, uh, our Cornelius Drebel Award, which really looks at inventive ideas, innovation, innovative solutions. This is just talking about something that you're doing that's different. We really want to share creative ideas in this network and have everybody kind of rise together. This is not a competition. We need to, we need to make a lot of progress fast. I'm an impatient person, but we need to make a lot of progress fast. And I think that it's totally possible if we work together. Yeah. And then we have our, um, uh, we have our third award along with that. So yeah, come come and uh, certify your building and you'll get into the award systems. Yeah. Cool. Junga Chaya, thank you very much for the great comments. Uh, Ron Thompson, who are the main influencers in commercial real estate? Good who question. Influencers. Um, you. I, yeah, I would say about your <laughs> No, I'm not. Um, I, think, I think it depends on... Um, what angle you're coming at from. So you have the different prop tech communities. We have some really strong um, prop tech communities that are very well known. We have some that are kind of uh, seeing the success of the prop tech 
Denmark's the PropTech, Holland, yes. that kind of thing, and and really um, working quickly to to catch up. But I guess also the universities. Yeah. Joseph Absolutely. Allen, of course, with yeah. his, uh, his book about healthy buildings. Yeah. Uh, but then we have Ethan. Ethan Bernstein, uh, what an amazing, amazing uh, researcher and professor from Harvard Business School who we work with, who has done incredible things looking at how we work together in buildings and something that you can measure with sensors, but it is people applied, looking at changing the way that we work together and analyzing that through data and actually being able to measure things like innovation and uh uh, business improvements. So it depends on where you come from. There's also buildings that are doing a lot of innovation in this and, and really getting this out. But what we're hoping to do is getting the thought leadership and the ecosystem to all be talking about this. So there's a little, we're bringing clarity to a very unclear area, I think, right now. And that's, yeah. that's something that there's no one expert in this area. Um, and I think maybe no one admits that right now that that and there are a couple of people who probably know it all but we all need to work together and and use the latest research the latest data the latest innovations to improve it even faster yeah so. and it's changing fast it's changing fast yeah one of the influencers of course uh, when i you and i talk all over the world uh it's always when we when we say smart buildings the next word is edge it's always, it's all, all, all over the world. The, the, the third word after smart buildings or the first word is, is edge, edge yeah. technologies. How come? They've done an amazing job at showing, um, kind of kind of getting it from being a possible to being uh, being an actual. Um, they've, they've really gotten the message out. They've shown uh, the, the benefits of their buildings. They've got the Edge Olympic here in Amsterdam, which we certified. Yeah. They've got their Berlin office, which not only is a very smart building, but also has used a lot of um, neuroscientists and, and different people to actually work with the architects to build different flows and different experiences for different types of people, which is what we talked about before. So I think what they've done is really gotten people in the door with with the why. And that's yeah. what I talked about in my um, talk. We need to get back to the why. And, and what are we trying to do here? And I think that that's given people enough permission to get started on this uh, journey yeah. or, or move it a little bit. Yeah, so, when you get started, it's difficult. Yeah. It's a difficult journey, but you need to get started and to get it on a roll, and then you will learn fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, do we have one more question, Christian? Is that a question from Christian Oosterveen? There's a belief that smart buildings should be built from scratch. Do you agree? That's a great question. I totally don't agree. I want to certify again? a castle. If you guys have a castle, I would love to certify a smart castle. There's there's a project we're talking with in Norway where they're kind of doing um, a, a, a refab of this amazing old building that I that I hope that we can work with and um, and tell their story. But I totally don't agree. I think some of someone was saying that one of the best buildings ever built was here in Amsterdam, uh, the the Verlage. Okay. Yeah. And and it's Where's from Bella, yeah, because it was their innovation designed within the air, keeping the air uh, ventilation in there, uh, yeah, within the walls, yeah. yeah. And they had very great airflow throughout the building. Yeah. It's a cold building, I've been in there, yeah. Um, but it's uh, so I think there's a ton of a ton of potential for doing old buildings because otherwise, what are we talking about, right? Only doing um, smart buildings for build from scratch, no, and. If you talk to any integrative design company, they're doing this a lot. They're working with buildings that are already in existence, that maybe have different smart elements and having to put it, pull it together into one solution. And this is what we're going to see in the future. I mean, five years from now, smart is going to be a lot more like our phone. Things are going to be very automatic. Things are going to make sense. They're going to yeah. be real time and it's going to be connected. And that's that's possible with, with old buildings and new buildings. It's just how we approach it. Yeah, and that's also uh, the, the, to come back on that question. The, the first question on the standard. Uh, well, uh, Chumba Cha was also talking about real life data. Well, and when we get that into the certification and get real life data in all kind of metrics, uh, then it's going to be really, really smart. So then, well, the standardization is just. I, I guess it's old fashioned. Yeah, it's an old way of thinking to create a standard when you have real life data that is changing. Oh, every second. Yeah. 
and you can do a better job every on every second because you learn so fast. Yeah, absolutely. And a, and a smart certifica certification has to uh, has to be smart. So yeah, we we need to have a certification that works with dumb buildings or buildings that are uh, a little bit more old fashioned, but also with the smarter buildings for the plugins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Real data, yes, yeah, real data. Yes, Jungach, how we're working on that. That would be great to get those real data out of those buildings into uh, into the system and bring it together and share that with everybody all over the world so we can learn really, really, really fast. At any point, do you talk, at any part of, you read it, at any part of the certification, do you talk about and or include indoor positioning technology for a building house to react based on the presence of its inhabitants. Do you think the indoor positioning is essential for the smart building part? Are you talking about occupancy data or? Um, I guess mm -hmm. I'm a little. I don't know. Okay. Teresa. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe can... we need to have a little bit more information on that. How many smart buildings are certified in People, PP, people, profit, oh, uh, planet model. Is it people, profit, panel? No. Yeah. I don't. I don't know that one either. Hmm? That's uh, Will. No. Yeah. Okay. Wayfinding. Richard says it's wayfinding. Okay. Um, yeah. We we include wayfinding within the certification. Um. um I think I think the indoor positioning, um, when you look at occupancy, when you look at how people maneuver through the building, it is like I said before, it's one of those crucial things where we need to start using our spaces um, more acutely. We have the tools to, uh, yeah, better facilitate where people are, and yeah, absolutely, I think it's a cornerstone of smart. Here is Teresa. Indoor positioning, such as allocating a house inhabitants per room. Yeah, well, that's really. Uh... Yeah. About as basic as uh, yeah. yeah 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 absolutely of course it's in there yeah yeah and then Will says public private partnership how many smart buildings are certified in public private partnership model well what is a perfect uh, public uh, private partnership model yeah I don't understand the question really. Um, so well. But amazing. I love this yeah, discussion. Great questions. Yeah. Um, I love being able to share with you guys. I think there's a lot of diversity in everybody that's here but, uh, today. And I I really enjoyed kind of yeah. having a conversation, getting the silos down. We need to start talking together, sharing best practices. We're going to this is going to move fast. And the people who um, who don't look like they're moving right now are planning a lot. Yes. There's a lot of things, um, what do they call it, under the, wa under the water? Yeah. A lot of movement under the water. A lot of crocodile. I don't know. <laughs> no, no. And, um, and what we're going to see is in the next year, we're going to have some big players emerge and really pop. So um, we want to help everybody in the ecosystem kind of prepare for the change that's happening and, and work together. Yeah, Chunga Cha is going to bed, so we are going to round this off. Chunga Cha, <laughs> we're going to call you because uh, it's good to to see if we can make some connections on what you talked about uh, and what we are doing with the Smart Building Certification. Uh, then one last question, what kind of uh, ROI can be expected with Smart Building Certification? That was the question. Uh, um, uh, that's a good question to round this off. That's a huge question. And it's something yeah. that, the, like we said before, the Americans are really moving towards. So what, how we're planning to approach this is we have a few case studies for smarter buildings having higher rental rates. Um, and looking at those and the, the level of the smartness to kind of evaluate and estimate of what we think a higher rental rate would be for um, a smart building. We are also talking with the banks about um, doing higher valuations for the building in general and then working towards the, the smart mortgages down the line. That's more of a long term plan, although not that long, yeah. a few years. So um, that's how we're approaching uh, the return on investment. And then, of course, it changes per market, but it's something that I think that we can start shedding light on um, with certain major markets first.
Yes, and of course, I think that uh, it, it's really new, the smart buildings uh, uh, that are now being in, coming up to the market. Um, and it's going to be different. New new buildings are maybe easy to do, but the, that's just 1% of all the buildings that we have in the world. So we really need to also start with uh, making those old buildings that are standing up right now, making them smart. And that's going to be a huge task. So what I think we, what we really need to do is to tell also that story about those case studies that we have and really uh, inspire uh, the, the whole uh, real estate world on what we can do. And I think that, that's also a, a great uh, return on investment because you need to do your whole portfolio. So what works, what isn't, what doesn't work. Yeah. So to bring in that benchmark and to compare with all different kinds of buildings and, and, and get to know all those use, uh, use cases, that will give a lot of value. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And now that there is a standard, I think that also opens up a lot of doors because before, you know, the Nordic companies were giving funding for, for smart buildings um, based on just kind of a, a description of what they were planning on the building. This is a really nice black and white measurement and, and document that actually gives them some detailed data and some benchmark data to, to open up doors in this way. So I think it's, I, I think it's going to be quite helpful in that way. Yeah. Does the certification work with innovation labs? That's uh, you must like that question. A hundred percent. And actually, you get points for uh, doing different living labs or working with universities or research organizations. So a hundred percent. I mean, like I said before, this is a time to get our hands dirty. This is not a, a clean and simple uh, smart building yet. Um, this is time for us to really work in, get in there, do some experimenting, try some things out, see what works for you, and then hopefully share it around because we really want um, the success stories to be something that, that goes viral, something that really catches on. So 100%. And please talk to me about it. Yeah. I those. Yeah, I think one more thing that I also learned yesterday, and I didn't see that yet, uh, that much, but um, uh, that's why I know that we are in a starting point because n not everything is there yet. And that's the, the, the platforms that, uh, that the data is coming into from all those, uh, uh, from all those buildings. I think those platforms are not there yet. Um, so they need to be developed and we need to get a standard because now everybody is building their own platform. Edge with Ask Next, of course, but I know Allianz is also building a platform. So all those real estate owners are building their own platform. Well, that cannot be the solution uh, because we have Microsoft, we have Amazon, we have those big uh, technology companies, and there should be like one big uh, uh, platform where, where all that data is coming in and, uh, and going out. And so, it's open. We yeah, and it's to, open. Yeah. We talked to B Grid last week, and they have a completely open platform, which seems to be working well because they they work with everyone. So it's we're we're uh, siloed in terms of our communication, but we're also siloed in terms of our our technology. Yeah, we, we need to work together. So yeah. So Yung Han, yeah, we're, we're getting in touch with you about the assessor program. That will be great. Yeah. Uh, contribute on it. Yeah, that will be great to to have you on on our team, of course. Which type of buildings have been smart certified? Commercial, public, residential, industrial? Yeah. So, yeah. So we have certified. Can we talk about all of them? It's such we, an exciting time. We, we can talk about three we, buildings. We have three press releases <laughs> out. Uh, the rest of them are all, uh, yeah, just in the back of my mind. So we, we have mostly done um, commercial buildings. We have also done a, uh, yeah, what is more of a, a residential or a, um, uh, yeah, more of a residential building. Um, we have done. Yeah, I can't talk about the ones I. Yeah, we we started with, we started with uh, commercial buildings for the most part, office yeah. buildings, mixed use, mixed use, um, uh, co-working spaces. Um, yeah, different uh, different aspects like that. Yeah, Siri says Siri? he knows he's, <laughs> he knows it. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, Richard, we're going to talk to you also fast because we want to know that solution with three thousand buildings. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, Milan, I'm going to give you that book. <laughs> yes, we need. We're going to give you the email. Well, we have the email address of email, yeah. Milan, so uh, that will be uh, coming uh, towards uh, Slovakia. We need yeah. to send it. There well, you go. Okay, that's great. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all.